So, welcome to the next uh, Fit Sit class. Today I'm using the yellow stick. <laughs> I hope that show, shows up well on the screen. So please come to sit towards the front edge of your chair, if you can, if you can comfortably. But some people need the bit of extra support. But, so, but if you are resting against the back of the chair, um, really try to get your hips back underneath you. See, if the hips are forward, um, it will tend to curve the spine. So really try to shuffle your bottom back if you're using the back of the chair. It's the same with driving, really, trying to get the hips all the way underneath you. Um, but um, uh, whichever way you're sitting, um, just sort of bring a little bit of attention to the shape of the spine. So if you're finding yourself dropping back, um, think of um, hips going back, tummy out, just to help you come up onto more the middle part of your sit bones, which you want to be un underneath you. And then um, just have the hands resting on the thighs and begin to move your right knee a little bit to the outside and a little bit to the inside. So just um, not worrying about the foot or doing anything particular to the foot, uh, uh, just moving the knee from side to side, but just noticing how the weight shifts to the inside edge and then to the outside edge of the foot. And then please pause and bring yourself to the attention sorry, to the left knee and then just begin to move that knee a little bit to the outside and to the inside. Good. And then pause, bring your attention to your right heel and lift the heel as high as you comfortably can. Hold it for a second and then lower. So you're just lifting the heel as high as you comfortably can. You'll feel those calf muscles, lovely calf muscles, contracting and then you let the heel come back down and then once more lift the heel to feel the work in the calf muscles and bring it back down and then the left heel begin to lift that as high as you can and then bring it back down once more just lifting the heel as high as you can and then back down and then a third time lifting it and then back down and then imagine there is a peg between your big and second toe of the right foot. Lift the heel high, take it to the outside and put it down, um, making sure you do put it down, allowing the knee to tilt to the inside, and then you try to lift the heel as high as you can in an arc to bring it to the inside and put it down, and then just continue to do that from side to side, allowing the knee to travel in the opposite direction to the movement of the heel and then we begin to get some nice movement in the hip joint and then come to center and then do the same with the left heel so you lift it as high as possible take it to the outside put it down lift it high and bring it to the inside and putting it down so just pivoting from side to side with the with the heel good and then come to center and this time uh, imagine there is a grape underneath your right heel and squash the grape press down into the heel and then release so you're just squashing that imaginary grape and then release and what you may begin to feel to happen as you press down into the that grape there's a shift of weight that can occur to the left hand side and then come back. So the, the right hip wants to lift a little bit and the left hip press down and then come back to centre. And then pause, put the grape underneath the left heel, squash, squash that grape down and then release. And then again just squash into the grape and release and once more squash good and then release and then see if you can alternate squashing once the right 
uh, heel down into the floor, allowing a little shift over to the left, and then squash into the left heel to allow a little shift over to the right. So you're just going from side to side, but really press down into the into the floor to bring this about. Good. And then pause. Please bring your right foot um, slightly forward of the left. And then first of all, just lift the toes, keeping the ball of the foot down, and then put the toes down and curl them under. And then lengthen the toes and pick them up, lengthen them down, curl them under, and once more lift the toes, put them down and curl them under. And then lift the toes, followed by the ball of the foot. See my soles of my dirty soles of my feet now. Put the balls of the toes down and then the toes themselves. So toes lift first, followed by the ball of the foot. Put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. And then once more toes, ball of the foot. Stay with the foot lifted but the heel down. And then begin to turn some circles with the big, make some circles with the big toe. But if you can see um, my knee and my leg, uh, there's uh, the movement is travelling up into the leg, into the knee and into the hip joint. And then just reverse the direction of these circles, making the circles with the big toe as expansive as possible. And then pause and now think it's the little toe side of the foot that's making these circles in one direction to begin with. And then just reverse the direction but still thinking it's the little toe side of the foot that's um, coordinating the circle. And then pause, bring that foot back to standing. And then bring your left foot forward, slightly forward. Um, just checking that the, the, as if there's a line from the second toe to the centre of the knee to the hip joint. And then, first of all, just lift the toes, trying to keep the balls of the toes down. Put the toes down and then curl them under. And then just try to lift the toes, trying to spread them apart as you do, and then curl the toes under. And then once more, lift just the toes and then curl them under. And then this time, lift the toes, followed by the ball of the foot, put the ball of the foot down, and then the toes. So toes come first, followed by the ball of the foot, put the ball of the foot down, and then the toes. And then lift the front of the foot, and begin to make some circles with the big toe. But letting the movement travel freely up into the knee and into the hip joint, and then just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. Once you've done about five or six, then pause. Think now it's the little toe side of the foot that's organising the movement. And then just reverse those circles um, again. Good. And then pause. Bring your attention back to your right foot. It's getting my stick out of the way. Right foot. And now, can you bring the, just the heel to touch the floor, and then the toes, and then the heel, and then the toes, and now just the ball of the foot, the heel, the ball of the foot only, and then the toes. So once more, ball of the foot, heel, ball of the foot, and then toes, and then switch feet, so it's the left foot that's forward slightly, and then just bring the heel down, and then the toes, the heel, the toes, the ball of the foot, the heel, ball of the foot, the tips of the toes, and once more the ball of the foot, and then the heel, good, and then come back to centre. Bring your attention to the right foot and then just see can you lift the little, um, sorry, the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot, keeping the knee more or less floating above the heel. So it's a smaller movement in the ankle um, as it just changed the 
the pressure under to the one side of the foot and then the other. And then pause and do the same with the left foot. So just trying to lift first the big toe side and then the little toe side of the foot, keeping the knee more or less in the in the centre. Good. And then leave that alone. Bring your feet and knees together. Sandwich the hands between the knees. And then just see, can you take your toes apart and bring them together? And then the heels apart and bring them together. Toes, heels, toes apart, then heels apart. Once more, toes apart and then heels apart, good. And then just bring your attention to your right foot only, and then can you take just the right toes away, and then the heel. Just the right toes, and then the heel, and once more the right toes, and then the heel, and then switch to the left foot, just the toes keeping the heels together, and then take the left heel away, put it down, come back to centre. So left toes, left heel, left toes, left heel, come back to centre, separate the, um, hand, I'll bring the hands back onto the thighs, now we'll do our man spreading exercise. So take your toes apart, heels apart, toes apart, heels apart, toes apart, Pause there, wherever you get to is good. And just think of pressing down a little bit more firmly into the little toe sides of the feet. Good, release. Press down into the little toe sides of the feet. You'll feel the opening in the adductors, the inner thigh muscles, something happening in the hips, release. Bring the feet towards each other, the heels towards each other, toes and then heels. Let's do that again, Le leading with the heels, the toes, the heels, the toes. See if you can just stay there and press a little bit more firmly into the little toe sides of the feet. Release. Press into the little toe sides of the feet. Release. Once more, press into the little toe sides of the feet. Hold for two seconds and then release, creep the feet back towards each other, toes and heels, and then come back to center. Just separate the feet and knees um, once more, and then just begin to slide your right hand down the front of the lower leg, come back up, down the outside of the lower leg, come back up, and then down the inside of the lower leg, come back up, and then down the back of the leg too, come back up and then it's the left hand coming down the front of the left lower leg and back up down the outside so you let the head go just reaching to where you comfortably can down the inside of the lower leg and then down the back of the lower leg too and come back up and then bring the right hand onto the left knee so we're just going on a bit of diagonal you can feel it just as something different to the ribs down the front of the leg down the outside of the lower leg, down the inside of the lower leg, and then down the back of the lower leg too, and then come back up. And then bring the uh, left hand on to the right knee, and then begin just to travel down the front of the lower leg, down the outside of the lower leg, down the inside of the lower leg, good, and then down the back of the um, lower leg and then come back to um, um, neutral. Have the hands, the arms rather, just by the side and then lift the shoulders up towards the ears, roll them forward and down and then try to squeeze them together behind you. So you really try to bring them up towards the ears let them come forward and down, squeeze them together behind you, come up towards the ears. And just as you do a few more of these circles, just check you're not substituting elbows for the movement of the shoulders. And then just reverse the direction 
of those um, circles. Again, it's really the when they come together behind that you probably have to think of giving a bit more juice to the movement to really bring those shoulder blades together. And then let's just do two more like that. Good. And then last time, and then release. Just bring your hands into a prayer position, <laughs> or uh, as if pra a prayer position. Good. And then begin to move your hands up towards the ceiling, looking up towards the hands. And then as you bring them down, just allow the back to round a little bit. Up towards the ceiling, looking up and then down towards you, looking down. Good. Once more, up towards the ceiling, looking up and then down towards you. And now look down as the hands reach up and look up as the hands come down. So looking down as the hands go up looking up as the hands come down and then just follow the hands again with the head and eyes as they go um, up and down Good. and then bring the hands just in front of the breastbone and then just begin to move the hands keeping the heels of the hands together to the right come back to center looking forward and then to the left and come back to center once more to the right, looking forward, coming back, and then to the left, come back. And then the next time, turn the head to the right too, as the hands go to the right, come back to centre, turn the head to the left as the hands go to the left, and then come back to centre. And then just pause in the middle and just see, can you peel the left hand away from the right? Peel them back together, peel the other hand away, and then come back together. So once more, left peeling away, come back, and right peeling away, good. And then point the hands forward, down to the floor, towards me, towards the ceiling. And then see if you can turn the fingers towards the breastbone, and to do that, you have to sort of allow the back to round the chest to soften. Good. So once more towards me, towards the floor, towards me, towards the ceiling, and then towards yourself, pressing the heels of the hands together. Good. And then release. Just interlace the hands super softly, and then just begin to wrestle the hands around each other. They're just warming up the wrist area. Good. And then pause and change the interlace to your other interlace. And again, just loosely um, wrestle the wrist. Good. And then bring your right arm forward. Turn the thumb side down. Bring your other hand forward. Turn that thumb side down. And then interlace the hands again. And then just bring the hands towards the chin and then away from you. Towards the chin and then away from you. And then towards one shoulder or one ear and then away. And towards the other um, shoulder or ear. Good. And then away. And then pause. Bring your left arm forward. Turn that thumb side down. Bring your other hand forward, turning that thumb side down. And then it's the other interlace that feels strange. Other interlace. And then once more, just bring the hands towards the chin, the mouth or the nose, maybe even the forehead, and then away. And then towards one shoulder, and then away. And towards the other shoulder, good. And then away. Just interlace the hands super softly. Um, and this time I'm keeping the heel of the hands away from each other. So it's just lengthening the fingers. Thumb pads are just, thumb tips are just touching. My palms are facing me. And then just begin to turn the palms one way and then the other. So just nice gentle rhythm, turning the palms one way or then the other. 
good and then just begin to keep the turning going as you take the hands a little bit to the right keep the turning going and then a little bit to the left keep the turning going good and then pause in the middle change so it's the other index finger on top and then again just begin to turn the palms one way and then the other and this time begin to travel the hands up towards the area of the mouth a little bit over to the right coming down and so just going in a circle around to the other side and then traveling them up back to the area of the mouth and then allow the hands to come to rest once more bring the hands back onto the thighs Good. now just um, turn the head um, uh, the head and eyes a little bit to the right come back to center a little bit to the left and then come back to center so just a little bit to the right come back to center a little bit to the left and come back to center and then bring an index finger just to touch the tip of the nose and then just keeping your head still can you move your eyes on the horizon to the right as if you're following an object in your room and then to the left all the way to your corners of your eyes come back to center once more looking on the horizon if you're fo as if you're following an object moving around you in the room all the way to the right keeping the nose still and then all the way to the left good and then come back to center and then um, just um, bring your other index finger on to the tip of your nose just make sure the lower teeth are released away from the upper teeth can you move your jaw to the right, come back to center, to the left, <laughs> try to do that and speak, come back to center, once more jaw to the right, come back to center, jaw to the left, come back to center, just rest. Have the other index finger again on the tip of the nose now could you have your jaw and your eyes go to the right <laughs> come back to center jaw and eyes to the left come back to center once more jaw and eyes to the right come back to center jaw and eyes to the left come back to center and now could you have the jaw go to the right but the eyes to the left. <laughs> Come back to centre. Jaw to the left, eyes to the right. Come back to centre. Once more, jaw to the right, eyes to the left, all the way to the corner. And come back to centre. Jaw to the left, eyes all the way to the right. Good. And then come back to centre. Good. And then just have the hands on the knees. Think of the right knee just moving back as the left knee goes forward. And then allow yourself to turn to look to your right. Come back to centre. Think of the left knee going back, the right knee forward. As you turn to look to the left, good. And then come back to centre. Please take hold of your stick. Good. And then have the um, stick on your uh, left hand side, on the left hand side, and have a comfortable high grip on the, on the stick. So just where you can comfortably um, hold the stick. And then just check that your hand, the one that's holding the stick, is as soft as possible. Separate the feet and knees a little bit more. Uh, and have the bottom of the stick um, away from you. It's kind of between the hip and the, and the knee. So not too far back, not too far forward. And then um, think of pressing into the 
right foot as you begin to reach the stick out to the left and then come back to center. So as you press into the right foot as you're reaching, you can feel how the weight is pouring down into that left sit bone and then come back to center. So just doing a few more and allow the head to follow the stick as if the arm, head is going to rest on the arm and then come back to center. So just um, uh, allowing the head to tilt with the stick and then come back to center and once more reaching. So here we're more tilting the spine to bring the weight over onto the, onto the left hand side. So now the next time you do that, stay tilted and think you're lifting the head up towards the ceiling. And as you do that, you'll notice if you're allowing it to, the right shoulder lowers, those ribs underneath the right armpit come closer together. So you're just tilting first. Think of lifting the head, looking forward. And it's, can you allow that right shoulder to lower those ribs to soften to bring you back onto two sit bones? Let's do one more. So you allow the stick to linger as you begin to lift the head, allowing those ribs to soften and then come back to centre. And now this time, as you reach the stick, can you think the right ear is just going to tilt a little bit towards the right shoulder as that shoulder lowers to, to bring the weight onto the left sit bone. Again, good, and then come back to centre, and then once more reach, good, and then come back to centre. And now as you continue to reach, trying to keep the head this time more or less in the middle, can you look to the left, right and then come back to centre? So just gently reaching, looking to the right and then come back to centre and then once more reaching, looking to the right and then come back to centre. And then um, the next time, reach, just see if you can stay, so you've allowed the right shoulder to lower the left side is longer than the right and the weight is on the left sit bone and you know that is true because if you wanted to slide your right hand underneath the right buttock there's a space there to do that and then bring that hand back onto the thigh and just see can you move your right knee forward and back so the foot stays in place and the knee is going straight forward, so not out to the side, not to the inside. Straight forward and straight back. And you're really, see if you can focus particularly on taking it back. So from the side, it would look really taking that knee forward, trying to get the, the hip to shift back behind you, forward and back. Good and then leave that alone and just pause for a moment just to rest the arm and then once more reach the stick out to the side trying to keep the head more or less in the middle and now as the knee goes forward could you turn the head to the stick as the knee goes back could you turn the head to the right as the knee comes forward you're turning the head to the stick as the knee goes back, you're turning the head to the right. Good. And then, without um, interrupting the flow, could you have the head go in the opposite direction to the movement of the knee? So as the knee goes back, you're looking to the stick. As the knee goes forward, you're looking to the right. Good. Pause. Just leave that alone for a moment. have the stick kind of in the, just pick a new spot for the stick. So I actually have just brought it a little bit further forward. 
a little bit further forward, but it's still out to the side. And now this time, could you reach the stick out to the side? So you bring the weight on to the left sitting bone and then sweep the stick, the top of the stick forward, allowing that right knee to go back to turn to look to the right, come back to centre. So the kind of top of the stick is travelling to the side and in an arc forward. So you go to the side, sweep it forward, allowing yourself to turn all the way to the right, come back to centre. So you're reaching out and forward, turning the head and eyes and the chest to the right, come back to centre. And then one more time, reach out, sweep it forward, and then stay turned to the right. Just notice how that right buttock is lifted, and then allow the weight to come into the two sit bones. And then you reach the stick out to the side and sweep it back. So I'll just show that from what it looks like from the side. So you're reaching out, sweeping it forward, turning, bringing the weight onto two sit bones, reach it out and bring it back. Okay, once more, out to the side. So you, the weight is on the left sit bone. As you sweep it forward and round, turn the chest. The weight is still initially on the left sit bone, and then you let the weight come onto the two sit bones. Reach it out, forward and out, and then bring it back to centre. Good. And then just pause, pause for a moment. Bring the stick onto the other side. Have the um, just the left hand just resting on the thigh, comfortable high grip on the stick, a little bit further away from you. And then let's go straight into the tilting. So the head follows the stick and then you come back. Just checking you're trying to keep the hand, the right hand as soft as possible. Come back to centre. So here we're, as you all know by now in this class, we're tilting the spine, allowing the head to fall onto the arm, if it can, come back to centre. But now, the next time, stay tilted. Think of lifting the head, but as you do that, that left shoulder lowers, so the head comes upright, and then you come back onto the two sit bones. So you're tilting, Begin think as you lift the head, that left shoulder lowers, so those ribs fold in, come back to centre. Once more, tilting, think that left shoulder lowers to bring you back. And then the next time, just try to keep the head more or less upright, which may mean just allowing that left ear to tilt towards the left shoulder, come back. And then the next time, look to the left, come back to centre. So just shifting, looking to the left, come back to centre, to the shifting, looking to the left, come back to centre. And then stay looking forward, bring the weight onto the right hand side, check that's really true, please slide that left part underneath the buttock, and then stay with your weight perched on the right sit bone, just see can you move the right knee straight forward and straight back. And again, really trying to, uh, it's almost as though you're trying to reach your left buttock back to the back of the chair, coming forward and reaching it back, lengthening that hip backwards. Good. And then come back to two sit bones, and then one more small reach out to the side, keeping the head more or less in the middle. As the knee goes forward, could you look to the stick? As the knee goes back, could you look to the left? So just synchronising the movement of the head and eyes with the knee initially, but then begin to oppose the movement of the knee. So as the knee comes forward, 
you're looking to the left. As the knee goes back, you're looking to the stick. Knee forward, looking to the left. Knee back, looking to the stick. Let's just do one more knee forward. Knee back, looking to the stick. Just come back to the middle a moment for a rest. And then just change the bottom of the, where the bottom of the stick is. So I'm going to bring it actually slightly, slightly further forward, still out to the side. And now can you side bend over to the right, sweep the top of the stick forward, allowing your the left knee to go back, yourself to turn, come back to the starting position. So you reach sweep the stick forward, letting yourself turn with the head and eyes and come back. Once more, reaching, sweeping round and then stay so that you're looking to your left and then just see, can you allow the weight to come onto the two sit bones and then you reach the stick out and back, sweep it back to come onto two sit bones. Let's see I mean, perhaps just do that a little bit more quickly, sweeping it round, letting the weight come on to two sit bones, reaching out and back to come on to two. Again, just, just seeing, can you um, do that a few times, reaching out and bringing yourself back to the starting position. Last time, reaching it, letting the weight come on to two sit bones, reaching out and coming back to centre. Now, um, pause and bring the stick back in onto the right, right hand, I'm um, sorry, left hand side um, with your hand on the stick. Doesn't need to be as high this time, can be lower. And this time I've brought the bottom of the stick closer to me. So it's not, not too far away, it's closer to me. So it's just a comfortable grip on the stick. It doesn't have to be very um, as, as high. And now this time, see if you can think of pressing the stick down into the floor and you're allowing your weight to shift onto the right sit bone and then come back to two sitting bones. So you'll just gently press the stick down into the floor. You can press the left foot into the floor too to bring your weight onto the right sit bone and then come back to centre. Okay. Um, you gently press, so the ribs have to shift away from the stick this time over to the right trying to keep the head more or less in the middle and then come back to centre. Once more pressing to bring the weight onto the um, right hand side and then come back to centre. So just wanted to, I've taught that gosh a long time ago um, and the reason I well, um, wanted just to show it, so if you've imagined someone who's got a, had a stroke on the, this on the uh, right hand side so they of course will be able to easily um, sort of reach out to side bend over to the to the left but then to side bend over to the right it's a different use of the stick to come over onto the right but they can still bring the weight over onto the right hand side. So see if we can combine those. So I brought the hand a bit higher again. So you're reaching out to the left, to side bend onto the left. You come back and I begin to press down into the stick to come over onto the right. So you're just reaching out, coming back, pressing down into the stick, reaching out, and pressing down into the stick. Once more, reach out and then press down to bring the weight onto your right sit bone. So, uh, uh, 
we're on the right but the head is more or less in the middle and then just see can you again move your left knee a little bit forward and a little bit back forward and back good and then pause and then um, bring the stick into the other hand again onto into the right hand uh, and then just see, can you, on this side, so you reach to side bend, come back, press down gently into the stick to come side bend over onto the left, reaching out. When you come back, press the stick down to side bend over onto the left, reaching out, press down to side bend over onto the left. And just see, can you stay here on the left and then just move your right knee forward and back. Forward and back. Good. And then come back to centre. Good. Just pause. Have the stick once more in your left hand and then have it near the kind of the... Uh, wherever the left thigh is pointing uh, on the diagonal and then begin to reach the stick away from you looking towards the top of the stick or the top of the hand come back to centre so just beginning to reach it away on the diagonal and then come back to centre just reaching keeping your nose lined up with the stick come back to centre and just notice how it's the right buttock if you're allowing it to that's lifting good and then continue but look to the right come back to center and then the next time look to the left come back to center looking once to the right come back to center and then to the left and come back to center pause bring the stick on the other diagonal over to the to the side, um, to the right, and then begin to reach to the far corner of your room, uh, allowing your left buttock to become light. So just reaching, keeping the nose lined up with the stick, and really just first of all, just noticing how that left buttock can lift to enable you to reach the arm further or the stick further. Good. And then see if you can begin to initiate the reach from the movement of the pelvis. Good. And then continue, but look once to the right, come back, and then once to the left, and come back. Once to the right, come back, and then once to the left, come back. And then bring the stick into your midline. So this is really where you have to be a little bit fussy. So really it's dividing you in two. Your hand is quite high on the stick and your nose is lined up with the tip of the, with the, the tip of the nose is lined up with the stick. So as you reach forward, you're looking at the hand and looking at your stick. If anything, slightly to the knuckle, the eyes are looking slightly to the knuckle side of the hand and then you come back. So if you just look at me for a moment on the screen, as I'm reaching forward, see that left shoulder lowers and the hip lifts, those two come closer together and then come back to centre. So there's a deep folding in of the ribs on the left hand side. But what sometimes happens is because people, well, they'll try to avoid that and what they'll do, um, well, one thing they often do is move the stick, I'm exaggerating, off to the, as they're reaching forward, they're going off to the side. Or they'll move the head to the other side of the stick. So just see if you can, even if you go forward only a little bit, be honest about the movement of the stick forward and the alignment of the tip of the nose with the stick. Good. And then pause change over into the right hand and um, let's not and um, won't spend too much time doing these because you're familiar with these have the right hand on the stick on the diagonal and then begin to reach off to the side on the diagonal 
come back to centre. Just thinking immediately, can you facilitate the lengthening of the stick away from you by initiating the lift of the left hand side of the pelvis. Good. Continue but look once to the left and then once to the right. Good. Once to the left. Good. And then once to the right. Good. And then bring the stick onto the other diagonal. So I'm reaching to the far corner of my room. Begin to reach, keeping the vision on the top of the stick if possible. Come back to centre. Initiating this reach from your pelvis. Initiating. Good. And then continue, but look once to the left. Come back to centre. And then once to the right. Come back to centre. So just alternating once to the left come back to centre, and then to the right, come back to centre, and then bring your stick back into the midline, again, hiding the tip of the nose, or lining up the tip of the nose with the stick, and then reach forward. So if you're keeping it reaching forward in the midline, the nose in line with the tip of the stick, it's the right shoulder that lowers, um, and um, the right side of the pelvis comes towards the shoulder. So that deep folding in of the ribs on the right hand side. Good. Now this will seem weird. As you reach the stick forward this time, still in the right hand, can you lift the left side of the pelvis? The left side of the pelvis. And then the right side of the pelvis, so we're alternating, lifting the left and then the right. Super. Come back to centre. Have um, both hands on the, on the stick, just comfortably in, oh, in front of you. So what we've just been doing there is really trying to initiate movement from the pelvis in different combinations. Just see if you can use the stick to keep you, to mark your midline, and then just see what's it like to bring the weight onto your left, onto your right. Keeping the head more or less lined up with the stick. So we're side bending, side bending. Good, pause in the middle. Have the hands a little bit higher on the stick and then see if you can begin to round the back to look at the bottom of the stick and then think of arching the back to look at the top of the stick and as you arch the back just think of gently drawing the shoulder blades together behind you rounding the back to look at the bottom of the stick arching the back to look at the top of the stick and once more rounding, good, and arching. As you arch, stay there and see if you can begin to go forward with an arch. Look down, bringing the ears between the upper arms, press into the feet and curl back. Arching to go forward, pulling in the tummy, pushing the feet forward to come back. Arching to go forward, rounding to come back, and then reverse the pattern so that you bring the ears between the upper arms, diving forward, arching, pulling the shoulders together to come back, diving into the pool to come forward, arching to come back, and once more diving and curling rather, arching, arching to, to come back. Pick a new spot for your stick, take it off centre, and whichever hand you had kind of habitually on top, change it so it's the other hand on top. And then think we're stirring our enormous pan of paella. 
reaching round. And you're really kind of marking out your territory here with this reach. And, and trying to keep the hands as soft as possible so that the movement is actually coming much initiating from your middle middle um, good reverse the direction of these circles and then keep going good and then pause take the stick off center somewhere to the other side change whichever hand is on top and then again begin to stir your pot your pan of paella going around with it Good. and then just reverse the direction of those circles good and one more time good come back to center just rest the top of the stick against your right thigh and have the bottom of the stick facing forward and just see can you bring your left foot to rest on this on the stick so we've done this quite a lot in class now um, and then think of just beginning to slide the foot up the stick allowing the knee to hang out to the other side and then think of pushing the pushing down the stick, pushing the heel away. So now it's fine just to do a little movement, little movement. So I'm showing quite a big movement, but if you need to make it small, it's absolutely fine. But every time you reach the leg away from you, lengthen through the heel, bring the foot up, letting the knee hang out. And you'll notice that when that happens, you're on two sit bones. As you reach the leg away, what happens is you're pushing through that heel, there's a shift of weight over to the right and, and if you're allowing the spiral to travel through the spine, it's kind of your, your head is reaching away from the foot, coming up and away, good, coming up, good, and away. Oh say nice and then come back to her center pause let's change to the other side I'm not doing too many of these today do you have the top of the stick on the left thigh you rest the right foot on the on the stick and then again it can be a small movement it's absolutely fine to begin with respecting what's going on with yourself so you begin to slide the foot up, turning the sole of the foot towards you. As you reach it away, you're pressing the heel away. Coming up, letting the weight come onto two sit bones. Reach away, press through the heel. You'll feel the spiraling away of the breastbone, the head in the opposite direction. Coming up, good, and then away. Good, and once more up and then away. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, I feel that in my lovely in, in my hips. Good. Bring the stick back um, vertical in front of you and let's go carefully. We're going to begin to practice transitioning up to standing. So not coming to stand first first thing, just getting used to it. Of course, a lot depends on how you're organising the legs. So if your knees are falling in, it's going to be a fall. Feet and knees in parallel. And you begin by pushing into the floor. Feel how that helps to um, move the femurs into their um, hip sockets. And you begin to arch, reach forward, reach forward till you feel the weight in the feet, bottom becomes light, bottom comes back, bring yourself onto the sit bones, vertical. So again, just beginning, look forward and up, don't look at the floor, look forward and up. Sense there's that moment when the weight is now in the feet, the bottom is light, and then come back to centre, good. Once more again, reach forward, 
and then when you're ready you think of the bottom coming straight forward to bring you up to standing squeeze the bottom to get some extra work out of the gluteals and then to go back down don't if you can don't look at the chair don't think of going down think of going forward 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 the bottom finds the chair and then you shift back onto two sit bones take your time go forward okay you have to go forward enough till you feel the shift of weight into the feet the bottom comes forward squeeze it and then look forward go forward with the head forward and up looking at the stick to allow the bottom to find the um, seat of the chair let's do one more going forward coming up to stand good and then begin to go back or go forward to sit back down onto the onto the seat of the chair and then come back to center just put the stick down for a moment shake out the hands in case you've been carrying lots of tension there good and then just see what is it like to side bend onto the left and onto the right could you turn this into walking to the back of your chair through side bending through the pelvis Good. and then begin to walk forward to so shift the weight one side to the other through the pelvis to come up to the front of the chair and then think of your right knee going back, your left knee forward, turning to the right, come back, and then to the left, and come back. Good. Give yourself a clap. Well done, everybody. Thank you very much. See you next week.